On today's show, it's all in the spirit of the season, the season of Halloween. We begin our haunted journey down in Red Wing, Minnesota. Yep, we found some good fly fishing spots there, but also found a perfect place for things that go bump in the dark. Right there, we're getting some really good. And later, these critters often are connected to Halloween, but how much do we really know about these mammals? Maybe they're not so scary after all. And our Minnesota Bound Classic this week looks back on some mysterious lights. Where are they? And what are they? Who knows? Those stories and more next. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC dealers. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. Ron is either too scared this week or out on assignment. Let me explain why. Every Halloween, we try and give you some of the scariest outdoor stories around, and I think we've done a pretty good job this week. The production team asked me to come out here to what locals call the Whispering Woods. Although I've got the campfire to keep me company, I swear I can hear voices out there. Anyway, on task. Our first story takes us to the fall woods where a fishing trip ends in Minnesota's most iconic and haunted hotel. Fall has a funny effect on Minnesota. Let's just say it's scary how pretty bluff country becomes on autumn days. <laughs> Ryan McCabe and I celebrate the last days of trout season. Nice cast, come on. On a small, meandering stream outside Red Wing, Minnesota. That's fun. Yeah, it's fun. But the trout are being spooky. Hard to come by today. Ghosts. Oh. <laughs> so much fun. Our end of season fishing tradition. That is a dandy little trout. Includes a quick stop. Back in town. You see, in the 1800s, Red Wing laid claim as the world's busiest wheat market. This town needed a hotel, so builders got to work. In an establishment this old and this grand, stories certainly creep in over time. We do have a, quite a few people that uh, have had experiences. Hotel historian Scott Hansen volunteered to host us. Well, after hours. 310 is the room that gets the most reports of paranormal activity. It's just something you feel when you're, you know, in certain buildings. See, some guests seem convinced they see ghosts. The majority of it centers around Clara. Clara Lillablad started bussing tables here in 1914. She eventually ran the hotel until her death in 1972. Some guests say Clara never left. We had one couple that were convinced that they saw her sitting in the chair when they woke up in the middle of the night. The spooky story started long before Clara. Workers stopped construction of the original hotel in 1875 after discovering mysterious Indian burial grounds. Shortly after the hotel opened, a July storm swamped the steamship Sea Wing on nearby Lake Pepin. More than 100 people drowned. Investigators used the St. James basement as a temporary morgue. Originally, this was the smoking room. Where Scott the points out another eerie artifact. A picture of a reunion of the original founders of the hotel, and there's one fellow in a chair. A lot of people in town believe that he's possibly not alive when the picture was taken. Upstairs, workers 
sometimes hear a voice. A little girl, happy voice is like a girl running and laughing or something. Strangely, the reports come from this hallway where a single photo hangs on the wall. This is actually a human hair woven by the girl that's in the photograph. Well. Makes you wonder if such accounts result from too much talk over too much time. Tonight, is there a ghost here? Eric Moen. Let's start with this. Might help find answers. This is a K2 meter which measures electromagnetic fields. We're talking about residual hauntings. So many people coming and going throughout the years, it creates like an emotional energy. Eric finds his energy and his true interest in this hotel. If I were a ghost, I'd love to hang out in an old hotel like this that's been so well maintained. So pay attention to the back. He and his wife Amy married at the St. James just one week before we shot this story. Here we go, we're getting something already. I hit it to yellow. Together, they hunt in haunted buildings. In all honesty, coming through that door, I was not liking this. So pay attention real closely to cold areas, the hair in the back of your neck standing up, that creepy feeling. If ghosts do exist, there's someone here with us. Eric and Amy hope to unravel their mystery. He's saying that that's a ghost in the photo, right? Haunted means simply frequented by something that isn't visible to us. Does that make it bad? No. Mine just spiked up to four. I just had a point five. Something's here. Something's with us. These paranormal investigators use all kinds of instruments. Spirits are thought to talk through this. Can you give us a message through the box? Some gadgets a little okay. creepy themselves. Can you say hi? And remember that dark photo of the little girl? Right there, we're getting some really good hit, and I got the heebie-jeebies. And we're right by that creepy picture, talking about ghostly things. So, I don't know, you tell me, is this place on? Those questions remain unanswered. But count on this, the St. James endures as Minnesota's most iconic hotel nestled right in the heart of bluff country. This is a, a crown jewel in Minnesota. It's a step back into history, although we have all modern conveniences. Gives you an experience of what it was like to stay in a 19th century hotel. Come visit sometime, if you dare. When we return, yep, they may look a little creepy, but there's more than meets the eye with these flying mammals. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Minnesota's select GMC dealers, Ice Force, Star Bank, Radco Truck Accessories, and by Evanroot, the official outboard motor of Minnesota Bound. Welcome back to the Minnesota Bound Halloween Special here in what locals call the Whispering Woods, although few will actually venture out here. During the break, photographer Aaron and I heard a noise. Look over and see that. I told you, I'm hearing voices. I'm starting to get freaked out. It's time for Ron Chair to get us out of these haunted woods and into a cave, Minnesota's real life bat cave. Welcome to Forestville Mystery Cave, my friends. Ah, don't be afraid. This is a Minnesota State Park, after all. It's just us in here. Us and a little brown bat or two. Ah, uh, they're just uh, hanging out. They come out when it's getting dark and fly around. And I think things at night are foreign to people. You know, humans are adapted for daylight activities. And so there's a lot of things at night that, that seem spooky. It's hard to see. Ah, yes, the makings of a perfect Halloween party. Bats are flying o'er the pumpkins. A scary thought for sure. A lot of folklore relating to bats, and I think there's some fears about bats that date back centuries. 
And so I think because of people's misunderstanding of bats, they're perceived as dangerous. But holy Batman! Don't bats tangle your hair or suck your blood or bring death to your door? Uh, you must admit, a bat's face kind of resembles Dracula, who was known for drinking blood. Minnesota bats eat insects, all kinds of them. They eat a lot of mosquitoes. They can eat as many as 600 mosquitoes every hour when they're foraging. They eat other pest species as well, including corn borer moths. That's one of their favorite prey here in, in uh, agricultural parts of Minnesota. All of which means if you're not a flying moth, no worries. Bats are nice, well, mammals just like you. In fact, in China and Poland, bats are symbols of happiness and life. They're much more closely related to primates like monkeys and apes. They have a very long history in evolution of mammals and they're critters that are uh, very sophisticated, very advanced. Bats? Sophisticated? Yes, it's called echolocation. Bats can emit a high frequency sound that bounces back to its ears, signaling the presence of flying insects or obstacles while they are flying in total darkness. Sonar in submarines or fishing depth finders utilizes the same technology. Bats had it first. Today, bats in America have a problem and it's not public relations. It's a disease. White nose syndrome is a terrible, terribly lethal disease, fungal disease, that has infected many bats in caves and mines in the eastern United States. And it's fatal to most of the bats that contract the disease. Unfortunately, this past winter, we saw our first evidence in Mystery Cave here, and also at Sedan Mine in northern Minnesota. So we're right on the verge of uh, a major outbreak, we believe, here in Minnesota. Not cheery news for bats or Halloween. Halloween did not originate with bats in the belfry. It was ghosts and goblins who appeared in the dark between a world of life and death. Eventually, the idea of night flying bats or the pumpkins fit right in with Halloween, giving us something more to fear for no reason at all. Your coals are nice and hot. Coming up, it's time for a wild in the kitchen, except it's really wild in the field. Closed captioning is brought to you by Connecticut. Today's show is dedicated to some of the scariest stories around. I'm here in the Whispering Woods where I've already heard voices, then we find this thing. I'm starting to get freaked out. Just roll tape as Laura Sherrick gets wild in the kitchen. Today is a special edition of Wild in the Kitchen, and I'm here with Chef Jim Kinberg from Fire Lake Grill House and Cocktail Bar. And Chef Jim, we are truly doing a field to table dinner tonight because you and I were doing some duck hunting at Watson's Hunting Camp with yes. the ladies. Yes. So it's ladies weekend. Great weekend. We invited you along, yes. of course. Thank and you. now we are going to cook the fruits of our labor. Yes, we have some amazing fresh duck. We shot a bunch of teal this morning. I've done a quick little marinade teriyaki, maple syrup, very simple camp recipe. We're gonna cook them over charcoal grill. Awesome, well let's get started. All right. So it looks like our coals are nice and hot. Yeah, you notice yeah. they're all covered in gray. That's exactly what we're looking for. That's gonna give us a nice uh, radiant heat to cook over. And, and I'm noticing you're putting those skin down. Exactly, because I don't want them to flare up. So how long are these on the grill? You know, probably a maximum of about 10 minutes, depending upon your temperature. You do not want to overcook wild game. So we want that skin to render down, get it nice and crispy. The last minute, we're probably gonna flip that over, give that other side just a little bit of cook to it. And it should be about medium rare, medium when it's all done. We've got a little quinoa salad, a little edamame, a little braised greens, and we're gonna tie in the same flavors that we marinated the duck breast. Love it. So we're gonna start off with a little bit of olive oil with a little bit of uh, fresh minced 
ginger and garlic. And Laura, I don't know how spicy you like it, but there's some red chili flakes Let's over there. Let's add a little spice, so the girls like it hot. There you go, keep it spicy. And our next ingredient is edamame. Edamame. We've got a little chicken stock and a little of that uh, maple teriyaki glaze. In advance, I made a little quinoa peel off, so pour in about a fourth of that. Healthy greens, so there's some spinach, there's some kale, there's some arugula, there's some Swiss chard, some beet greens. Toss all those right in there. Check on our duck. We should check on the duck. Look at that. So you see the skin is nice and crispy. It cooked through nice and juicy. I think we are ready to go to the plate. Look at that. All right, I think I know the secret to girls' hunting weekends. Uh, it's bring along a private chef. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Something so simple could be so gourmet at hunting camp. And going from the wetlands to our table tonight, as they say, it's wildly delicious. Real broad. Up next, our Minnesota Bound Classic is dark. It's mysterious and it's, well, we don't really know what it is. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Borderview Lodge, Ellsworth Creamery, and by Totem Resorts. Now I know why Ron wanted me to host the haunted show. These woods are freaking me out. Now, ugh, the temperature's dropped like 20 degrees. There is a chill in the air. It's the same feeling I got when we documented this next story. Story about scary lights in the woods. It's today's Minnesota Bound Classic. Stories of ghosts are nothing new, but to see, maybe to believe. So it goes along a rural Midwestern road. That was a pretty good crowd last night. On any given night, people peer down Robbins Pond Road. They hope to catch a glimpse of a Michigan UP mystery, the Paulding Lights. First thing you do is you try to come up with an explanation for it. And then you can't, you know, it's kind of like, I have no idea what these things are. People say they see strange lights out here. A U.S. Forest Service marker tells the story. Myths suggest the lights may be a ghost. The ghost of a turn-of-the-century railroad brakeman crushed and killed between two rail cars. Some say his spirit still lives along the old rail line. It's some kind of strange energy, you know, phenomenon that we don't know about, I guess. That's, <laughs> that's what it seems like to me. Uh -huh. Groups gather almost nightly here. When darkness comes, they wait, and then... What the heck? I don't know. It's not really going anywhere, though. It's just... Look at it, look at it through here. Now it's white, mm -hmm. with the red underneath. Now it's getting larger and larger and bright, real bright. The lights appear. I just see it's like a big round ball, like a mass. Oh, it's coming fast down the, down the hill right now. No, there's two. Many people speculate on a cause. It looks like it's connected to the power lines. Some point to the power lines, others to a ghost. And some, they say the Paulding lights are nothing more than cars on some distant road. Doesn't look like the back of car lights, does it? Do you break lights? I don't know. I want to go over there. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see it. What is for sure, this UP mystery keeps people coming back to the woods. It's very strange. It's interesting. What do I think it is? <laughs> I have no idea. Weird lights in the woods, strange voices. I've had enough of this Halloween voodoo. Ron and Raven, you can have the show back next week. In the meantime, don't forget to take the time to introduce a kid. What is that? To the great outdoors. Aaron, behind you. Transportation provided by 
Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. For more information on these stories and more, catch us on the web at mnbound.com.